So these are my three favorite tools, or I use the most anyway. So wire strippers, flush cutters, and needle nose pliers. They all are quite useful for working on a breadboard and also pretty handy for soldering. So you can hold something in place with these or cut something in case you need to cut the wire shorter and of course you need to strip the wire. So all three have their purpose. This does have a cutter function and a plier function but I think both of them are pretty poor so that's what these two are here for. So multi-purpose tools are overrated in my mind. Alright so next up are some soldering tools. So of course a soldering iron is essential for soldering. You can use an extra set of arms to hold your leads and if you're working on a PCB you would want a vise. This one I got at Lowe's. I think it was like 20 bucks, maybe 30. And it has the swivel head so you can change the position if you need to. And lock it down. It's got a decent range of motion so you can put a larger board in there if you need to. So it maxes out right there so maybe three and some inches, maybe four. So yeah, it works quite well. So that would be a nice soldering vise and some other tools I use while soldering are tweezers. So there are these tweezers which you pinch to close and then there are these tweezers that which you pinch to open. I prefer these ones just so it locks on and then I can do what I need to do and then release it. Some people like to use forceps. I personally find them to be pretty awkward to lock and unlock. So I use them from time to time, but I prefer using tweezers or needle nose pliers. I really don't care for these. These, these are really bad. So I may as well throw these out after I'm done with this video. And if you're doing SMT soldering, you would want some short tweezers with an angle on them so you can pick and place components quite easily and to hold them down as you solder an edge. So yeah, those are good. And what else? So that's about it for soldering tools. Now I'm going to move on to the case building tools. So. You buy an enclosure from Radio Shack or wherever you choose to buy an enclosure and then you're going to need to start drilling some holes in it. So you need some drill bits. So I like the range of drill bits like so and I also have some precision bits. These are very, very small. The smallest one is extremely small. Maybe you can see that, maybe you can't. So very small. Uh, you also may need to drill larger holes, so you would get something like this. So here's the one inch, and then the three quarters, one half, and so on. So it's good to have large, medium, and small bits for your enclosure designs. Now, this is a great tool to have for doing measurements. They're called calipers, in case you didn't know. And I personally like to use the millimeter setting. And another nice thing about this is if you're using uh, ABS plastic enclosure, 
you can actually start nicking parts of it so you can make nice marks on your case so you know where you need to drill the hole. So that's nice. And let's see, what else do we have here? Oh, and also while you're working on enclosures, having a vise is good for that as well. And also, not all the holes you're going to need are going to be circular. Sometimes you need to make a square hole. Or a, yeah, square hole. So you need to use a razor blade to cut that hole square, as opposed to being just the circular hole. Now you can get some razor blades like these, which are useful, and you might want to use something like this. So you get a lot more power to it, and you can also get some precision going with it. So I like this one a lot. And then there are a bunch of these tools. They're very useful for cutting. So there's this slanted chisel here, then there's the flat chisel, and then there's a wire brush. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. Now, they do crack off if you try using them too much, so you may need to buy a new pair or look for some metal ones. And of course a file is very useful to have. Ah, and the hot glue gun. This is for mounting your PCB or relays or whatever you need to mount within the enclosure. It's very strong. A little, little uh, messy to use, but other than that, it's quite good. And yeah, it's pretty much the essentials. And of course, if you're going to desolder something, you need a solder sucker. Something like this guy. Or this guy. He works pretty well as well. And if you're going to be soldering a lot, I recommend getting a fume extractor or building your own like I did. So you have an activated carbon filter like this. And that goes in front of the fan so the fumes don't come out the other side of the fan. And you just turn that on while you're soldering. Now you want to keep this somewhat close to what you're soldering, so I mounted an extra set of arms on the base here. And it's pretty solid. So there you go.